You're watching live now from Fox. I'm Daytona Everett. We want to go into a story today talking about social media. Norway setting new laws requiring influencers to disclose filtered photos. To break this down and kind of discuss how this is going to set a precedent for other countries and what it's going to look like to be an influencer in Norway, I have the CEO of Open Influence, Eric Dahan. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for being here on live now. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so what does this law mean? Just just break down the history of all this, how this came to be. Yeah, so so essentially um, what's been happening uh, has been, you've had a lot of influencers and people on social uh, changing the appearance of their body through these different filters. Um, and so we've, we've seen it um, all over, it, you know, virtually, or many influencers are doing it. And uh, what what Norway is saying is this is causing people to, you know, have unrealistic um, uh, expectations uh, when it comes to, you know, their body image, right? And, and this is something we've seen uh, and a criticism we've seen for years with the cosmetics industry with setting these sort of unrealistic standards. Um, and so, you know, uh, there, there's sort of an underlying um, mental health reason and sort of, uh, you know, self uh, you know, re reflection uh, uh, issue that's happening. And so Norway is looking to curb that by forcing uh, old content that's advertised or advertisements that use influencers to disclose if uh, the influencer's body shape, size, skin tone uh, have been manipulated in any way or retouched in any way. And how is that going to work? Uh, you know, I, I think it's going to work very in a very similar way to how we see um, brands uh, who work with influencers being forced to disclose that it's an ad, right? So if you're, if you're scrolling through Instagram or, you know, if, if it's like YouTube, for example, you'll see like this video is promoted. You'll see on Instagram will be a hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored. Um, you know, you'll see like partner with language. And so I think in, in a similar way, if that content includes a filter, um, we're going to see that the influencer have to disclose that. Um, now enforcement is a whole nother issue. Um, but I believe that a lot of the brands are going to be driving the enforcement the same way they're enforcing the disclosures because the brands have really deep pockets and are therefore a pretty big target uh, when it comes to following any sort of these regulations. Yeah, I just find this so interesting. Are we hearing from any of the social media giants about this? Um, not, not too much necessarily. Um, you know, they, they've spoken out about it a bit, but I think this is pretty... Um, you know, pretty progressive law on Norway's side to be looking at, um, you know, disclosing this. The UK has something very similar um, with the Advertising Standards Authority. Um, so, so what's very interesting is they're looking to enforce this through the route of, of advertisements rather than just in general with influencers, which is obviously much, much harder to, to track um, and enforce and more like boiling the ocean. I mean, you kind of stepped into it a little bit, but what's the main motive for this? I mean, I know personally as being a millennial, everyone's online, everyone's on social media, and it's tough. Comparison is real and uh, depression rates that are an all time high. We're in the pandemic and people are on their phones a lot more. So is that the main focus of this or is there something else that's added in for, for reasoning? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the main focus comes back to that um, sort of mental health issue that comes up with it, that that sort of unrealistic standard um, that comes about from these filters, right? Because ultimately what we see forms our reality. And so, you know, if you're, you're a child and you're seeing, you know, sort of unrealistic content constantly, that's going to shape what you think reality is. Um, and so I think that's what's really motivating, um, you know, these laws. Now, whether or not you know, the legal route is the best way to enforce this. I, you know, I, I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure, but I, I could tell you that's definitely the motivation um, behind it. Yeah. Is it realistic to think that a law like this is going to deter influencers from editing their photos? Do you think we're going to go back to seeing unfiltered photos? You know, I, I, I think, you know, incentives can be very tricky. Um, and so, uh, you know, one, this is limited to advertising content, which is much easier to enforce because you're going to have the brands ultimately enforcing that with the influencers they partner with. Uh, will it change filters in general? Maybe, maybe not. Um, also, you know, you know, this might incentivize people to, 
you know, get the alterations in real life, you know, in order to avoid that sort mm. of disclosure, right? Um, and, and not saying that that's a likely possibility, but it is one sort of example of how incentives can kind of work out. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this, this plays out. You're located now in Los Angeles, right? In California? Yep, yeah, that's right. So do you think that this could, in the future, um, come to the United States as well? Um, it, you know, it, it's possible. Um, I think that really the best sort of enforcement for this has been more cultural than anything else. There's been a whole rising culture uh, within social communities that it's been focused more and more on authenticity, right? Like when I, when I was growing up, uh, you know, or, or, you know, getting to my early twenties, Instagram was taking off. It's a very millennial focused platform. Um, it's a fantastic place to discover. And you look at what Gen Z is growing up with. It's TikTok, right? And that's a mm -hmm. platform that pushes a key value for Gen Z, which is authenticity. And so like culturally we're seeing these trends where many influencers are posting their you know real life images side by side with their altered images um, to really show that they're real people uh, and, and to really play on this idea so i, I think we're seeing um, especially in the u.s sort of this cultural movement that's um you know addressing this this sort of issue of uh, of the unrealistic standards yeah so important moving forward to uh to empower authenticity for, for people who uh, are at that pivotal stage, so young teenagers just growing up and learning so much. Um, the standards are really high online. So uh, could be very interesting if this moved into the United States as well. Anything else to note? Um, no, I mean, I, you know, I, I, think, I think what we've seen with social in general is uh, enforcing anything could be pretty, pretty difficult, right? We've mm -hmm. seen, um, you know, we, we, we've seen political actors manipulating social platforms all around the world. Um, you know, we, we've seen all sorts of trend ri trends rise. We've seen brands have issues with brand safe content and having their ads run uh, in, front of, uh, in front of content that's not brand safe. And so I, I think it's gonna be very interesting to see how this gets enforced, uh, how involved the platforms are gonna be uh, in enforcing this or disclosing this process, right? The easiest route would be if you're using a filter on a platform, having that disclosed or, or the platforms forcing that. But, um, you know, the question also comes that back to incentives and, and um, you know, and, and what people want and also uh, letting individuals, um, you know, decide what content they want to see, right? And again, culturally, we're seeing this big trend towards authenticity, um, you know, which, um, you know, I, I'm personally very happy to see and, and, and very proud to see that, you know, individuals are really waking up and saying, you know, we want to connect with one another. We want that real content, um, you know, and, and we want that, that sort of bond with the people we follow to feel authentic. Yeah, we're seeing so much misinformation online that uh, an authentic picture unfiltered would be refreshing. Um, Eric Dahan, the uh, CEO of Open Influence, thank you so much for being on live now. Uh, I'm sure we'll be speaking in the future about this. Awesome, Daytona. Thanks for having me.